Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, it's 
see you again. Wow. So we thought we were we just got stuck in the sky. Yeah. yeah. And so then we were watching Falcon and we were watching the Bad Yeah. 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 And I was in the same So now we Good morning, Margaret. I'm subbing for Kimberly today, but long time no see. Good morning. Can you hear me? I can, yeah. I can, yeah. Oh, it's nice to see you again. Yeah, totally. Where are you where are you zooming in from again? Um normally it's Alaska, but today I'm in California. Okay, cool. That's what I thought okay, cool. I, Alaska was in there. the landscape on um, in and out from the town and not on Yeah, that sounds beautiful with less light pollution up there and yeah. the moon. Yeah. Full moon. Yeah. I didn't realize it was full moon. Yeah, yeah. Sunday. And brighter than usual. Mm -hmm. Is it? Yeah. I just like I can't remember the name of the moon, but you know, indigenous people are named for all these moons. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm a big Vedic astrology geek, so I'm pretty in depth with all that, y'all. So, um, okay, well, good morning. Um, I've got a whole plan for us today, but I want to kind of open it up if there's anything in particular that folks are feeling they need from their practice. Um, of course, throughout, autonomy is all yours, so do whatever you need to. I don't care if you're listening to me or not, so <laughs> it doesn't matter. Um, but any anything in particular, or maybe descriptions of how you're feeling and how you'd like to feel towards the end. 
You don't have to answer me right now either. I'm elated to be back here because I Great. Up. Oh. <laughs> okay, cool. So everyone's just glad to be back. <laughs> nice. Settling back in. Cool. Okay. Um, well, uh, just so you all know, we're going to be probably getting done right about 10, so we'll get done a little bit earlier. I had to. I have an uh, appointment that I have to get to right after this, just so you know. Um, we're going to start a little bit with sound. Has anybody ever worked with a Shruti box before? No? Okay. So, Margaret, you're going to have to let me know. I have the microphone on for instruments. So does this sound come through when I start playing? Uh, sort of. It um, begins it and and then it kind of went away, but um, okay. I'll use my imagination. Well, it might, it might, well, might come it up. Might, it might come okay. Up. No, I can't hear that. You do the same thing? You do the same thing? I don't hear anything. Oh, okay, it's getting too loud. It's no worries. Okay. Well, we're gonna do we're gonna we're do gonna some chanting. So as I guide chanting, you can run in, in on that. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. That's what it might might have changed it. So. The invitation to start off here is we're first going to kind of settle into the body. So I'll invite you to close the eyes if it's comfortable. Otherwise, find a steady spot to gaze out on the floor in front of you. On the next few cycles of exhales, I'll let your awareness begin to move down towards the base of the spine. As you breathe out, you might let the shoulders begin to fall away from the ears a bit. As you draw the awareness downward towards the spine on the exhale, also have the intention of drawing inward towards the midline on the exhale. So if we we're beginning to draw all of our energy from the exterior towards the interior. So we're gonna start off with some sound practice. Um, really sound is beautiful art form in the yoga tradition for helping us not only clear the energy channels, but really kind of align with the hum of the cosmos is what the whole idea behind the sacred syllable OM is. It's that sustaining hum that's kind of underneath everything all of the time. And we can use the sound to direct our awareness inward to help calm the mind and to help kind of alleviate stress tension in the body too, kind of supported by the instrument as well. So at first, we're just going to hear the sound and we'll begin to just listen and kind of like tune into our sense of hearing as we uh, as the sound reaches the ears. And then I'll invite us to start chanting OM on the exhale. So as we breathe in, we'll take a breath in and then you'll just OM on the exhale. And we'll just kind of continue to cascade like that for a few minutes. And everybody can be at their own spot with your own breath capacity. And you can go as loud or as, as uh, soft as you want to. So you might quite start quite soft with just humming on the exhale. You might kind of notice that you're uh, feeling more open or things are kind of moving the more that we do it. So you might want to get a little bit louder as we go. So invitation just to explore sound. It really doesn't matter what you sound like. It's more about experiencing the vibration in the body. So as you're making sound on the exhale, I'll invite you to let the mind, allow the mind to kind of entrain to the sound, let the mind begin to rest on the sound as we begin to do that. So we'll begin first by listening. Before the sound starts, I'll invite you to bring the awareness to the opening of the ears. And then just notice the current of sound begin to reach your sensory receptors. You can't hear the sound, Margaret. I'll invite you to listen to the ambient sounds in the space around you or just beyond the room that you're in.
if it feels appropriate, you might bring a palm to the heart. Hold the hands in a mudra or a hand gesture that you're familiar with. As you're ready, we'll begin oming on the exhale. You can take a deep breath in together. Bring the awareness to the heart space. And as if the sound was like a laser, we're going to drive the sound with our awareness into the heart space. So on the exhale, just let the awareness continue to move deeper into the heart space as you make sound. Um... Still heading the journey out of the head, out of the mind, into the body, into the heart. Um, Let that go. And then use internal sounds. So still with the awareness at the heart on your exhale, internally chant phone with internal sound. Down. Subtle effects of the vibration. I'd like you to gather the fingertips together in front of the abdomen from Kini Mudra. So, this mudra is a gesture for the integration of the elements. And remembering how integrated we are with the ecosystem, that we are made up of all of the elements that make up nature, and that we can work to balance all of our energies through the practices that we do. 
do in yoga. And imagine that you were holding this gesture inside the chest, inside that heart space there. We'll continue to revisit this heart space. Sense of integration, this spot where we might be able to find some glimpses, some relationship with that truest part of ourselves. Maybe reflect how you connect with that now, how you have been lately, what that means to you, what that feels like to you. Go ahead and bring the hands to the knees. And we'll start moving a bit on the inhale. We'll tilt the pelvis forward, pull the heart forward any amount. On the exhale, tuck the tailbone under, pull the middle back back, let the head drop forward any amount as well. Inhale, the pelvis tilts forward. We let the belly drop forward as the chest moves towards the earth in front of you. On the exhale, the pelvis tilts back, pulling the back, rounding, dropping the head, chin towards the chest. And then find the rhythm back and forth supported by the breath that feels appropriate, that feels inviting to the body. We begin linking the breath up with the movement. As the inhale begins, we begin to move forward. The exhale begins and then the movement backward follows. And then changing it up a little bit, we'll go ahead and bring the hands just in front of us. Maybe rub the hands together a little bit or just feel the space between the hands. Kind of notice when you can feel that little magnetic connection of the energy between the palms. And now on the inhale, we'll go ahead, uh, or sorry, on the inhale, we'll pull back to one side. So go ahead and pull into the center as you tilt the pelvis back. And on the exhale, we're just going to push forward this way, kind of push the arms out, draw the shoulders back, and the kind of the head reaches towards the sky as the chin tucks in, if that makes sense. And then we inhale, pull back towards the center, and then exhale, push out towards the other side. Inhale, pull back, and then begin to imagine that there's this light that we're moving with the movement. So the exhale, the movement, the light goes out. Inhale, we draw the light up towards the center of the pelvis. Exhale, down the other leg as we push out, lengthen the spine. Inhale, move back. Exhale, move to one side. Exhale, move to the other side. As you do this, you might be able to feel into the subtle pulsing in the palms. All these little tiny signals reminding us how alive we are right now. Filling into the rhythm of the breath still as we move back and forth. Slide another time. Feel free to shift the leg position if the legs are feeling stiff. Um, we'll go ahead and begin to drop the left ear to the left, or I can mirror you also to the right ear to the right shoulder. We'll then walk the left fingertips out towards that wall. Maybe allow yourself to kind of bend back and forth, kind of as if the muscles there were kind of like a rubber band, we're stretching and letting them come back as we kind of feel into the shoulders, feel into the neck. 
as you settle in with that ear dropping towards the right shoulder, it might feel good to bring the right hand up to the head. Maybe the left fingertips walking even a little bit further away. And as you settle into this shape, I'll invite you to imagine you're breathing in, sending the breath and the mind directly to that right shoulder, the left shoulder, excuse me, on the inhale. And then notice what any what color might be associated with the tension in any sensation that you're experiencing in that shoulder. Maybe that color, you can see a cloud of smoke of that color leaving the body on the exhale. Breathing in life force, revitalization to that spot. On the exhale, releasing tension, letting go, holding stress. Hold the head back up to center. Wow, a few cycles of breath in the middle. Just notice the difference in sensation between left and right. Dropping the head towards the left and allowing yourself to explore that same dynamic movement a little bit before settling in. Curious about how this side feels. Maybe that right hand walks a bit further away. Left hand might come up to draw the head down a bit more. Same invitation to breathe into that spot, send the breath there. We sing, watching the muscles melt on the exhale. the center, walking breaths with the awareness towards the midline, noticing the balance between left and right. Then shift over onto the hands and knees when you're ready. Grab in a blanket for underneath the knees if you know that the hardwood usually feels a bit rough for you. Once on the hands and knees, tune into the sensation of the fingertips and the palms against the earth, the knees and the feet. And whatever pace feels welcoming, we'll begin to find some circles with the hips. Kind of noticing how the lower body wants to move now after sitting for a little bit. And right here, notice if the mind already kind of popped you back up into its activity. And see if you might be able to drop the awareness down into the pelvis where we're spending some time now and really being curious about what sensation is presenting itself. Inviting the mind to stay there with the experience, with the breath as well. and eventually exploring both directions.
Sliding the hips come back to the center. We'll move towards cat and cow series. So we're going to inhale, drop the belly as the pelvis tilts forward. On the exhale, we'll round towards cat and then push back towards child's pose. On the inhale, we'll pop up onto the knees. The arms will come up alongside the ears as the gaze comes up towards the palms. On the exhale, we'll twist to one side. The right hand can move back behind us. The gaze follows any amount. Inhale, the palms float back up and touch together at the top of the inhale as the gaze looks up. Exhale, we twist towards the other side. Inhale, float the palms up overhead. The gaze comes up. Exhale, float back down the child's pose. Inhale, pull forward the cow, the belly drops. Exhale, round, push back to child's pose. Inhale, up onto the knees, the arms come up and the gaze follows the palms. Exhale, twisting to one side. Inhale, floating back up. Exhale, twisting to the other side. Inhale, floating back up. Exhale, floating back down. Inhale up to cow, the belly drops. Exhale, round, move back to child's pose. And we'll go on for a few more times. Every time we're in child's pose, we pop back up to the knees and twist to either side. And begin to go for a few more times at your own pace. Might be a little bit faster, a bit slower than what I was just leading. And then maybe over the next two or three rounds here, you remember that sound of the vibration at the beginning. That subtle hum. Maybe you're not making the internal sound, but you just remember it. You can let me remember the sound. The next time we pull up to uh, cow, we'll let the belly drop and tuck the toes. Then we'll exhale, push back the downward facing dog, Adhanasana. First time here, we'll go ahead and feel things out, bending one knee straight in the other leg. Might feel nice to find some levity, some buoyancy, finding some bounce up and down in the heels. As you do that, you might see how you can let go of the muscles and the legs the calves, the thighs, let everything move with gravity back and forth. I thought there was like a little spring underneath the heels you were trying to press against, a little pogo stick action. Might feel nice to explore bending the knees, hovering them towards the mat, and then straightening the legs as you move the hips back. On the next exhale, begin to walk the feet forward towards the hands to forward fold. Similar motion here, you might bend the knees or let the hands wrap around the legs. Find a little bit of movement up and down in the hips, bending the knees, dropping the hips down, a little bit of spring-like action here. Notice where the weight is distributed in the feet, maybe drawing things towards the center, allowing the arches to come up a little bit, pressing the big toe and the little toe into the earth. You're still pulsing. You can press the hips towards the sky any amount. Draw off the head towards the earth. The arms might dangle or you might grab a hold of opposite elbows. We'll be here for about five or six breaths.
And then he'll become begin to come up to standing. We'll come back to Kimi Mudra in front of the navel. Observing how you feel so far, bringing the knee awareness to the center of the head. Looking down towards the shoulders and scanning the arms towards the fingertips. Scanning the left chest and the right chest. The right shoulder blade and the left shoulder blade. Awareness wraps around the abdomen and then to the lower back, to the pelvis, down the right leg towards the right toes, back to the pelvis, down the left leg towards the left toes. And you feel the palms against the earth or the soles of the feet against the earth, the bottom palms. Next inhale, let the arms come up overhead, the gaze follows up. On an exhale, we'll fold forward again. Inhale up halfway, extend the space between the sternum and the navel. On the next exhale, we'll fold forward and draw the right foot back. The left foot will be forward for a low lunge. You might go ahead and grab the blocks here on either side of the foot. Allowing your time to settle in. So it might be more appropriate for you to drop the back knee down right away. Otherwise, that night knee will be popped up. Invitation here is to explore a little bit of movement up and down in the hips. Drawing the left hip back a little bit. And then shift to a sliding gliding movement forward and back. And then settle into some stillness. Come back to the breath. Five steady breaths in the shape. The shape itself becomes its own kind of meditation. Plant the hands on the next exhale. The left foot will go back to meet the right into plank. Knees up or the knees come right down. Feel the center of the palms against the earth and the legs really strong. Come back to the breath. Allow yourself to shake a little bit if that's what's happening. Maybe drawing the navel up towards the spine a bit. On the next exhale, the knees come down. We move back towards child's pose. See if you can keep the palms right where they are here in child's pose, pulling the tailbone towards the heels as you plant the, hip, the palms on the earth. You might notice how you can draw the shoulders back a bit, maybe get a little, a little bit more stretch underneath the armpits. Coming back to the flow of breath here on the inhale, follow the breath in and down into the heart space. On the exhale, follow the breath up and out like a wave, inhale in and down into the heart. On the exhale, following the breath up and out. On the next inhale, we'll come forward onto the hands and knees. Palms can stay where they are. On the exhale, we'll lower down onto the belly. The palms can frame the chest. We'll come up into low cobra. So the hands might hover or they might be supporting the, the movement a little bit. We'll inhale, peel the chest up. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, peel the chest up. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, come up again. Either from here or from back down onto the flat of the belly, we'll draw the palms to the earth, tuck the toes, on the exhale, move back towards downward facing dog. Exploring a little bit of movement here again, too, if you feel called to. Eventually arriving back at stillness. 
Again, focusing on the breath, drawing the breath into the heart space. On the exhale, watching the breath leave up and out. On the next exhale, the knees come back down to the mat. We move back towards child's pose again. Another three breaths, watching the breath move into the heart. Watching the breath leave the body. Inhale up onto the hands and knees again. The knees might stay down, otherwise we'll exhale, press up to plank. Just for a breath or two in plank. And then however it's gonna get there, one step or a few steps, the right foot will come forward. Now we'll do the lunge on the opposite side. Once settled in, the knee again might be down or the knee's gonna be up. Either way, find a little bit of movement up and down in the hips. If the knee is down, this might just look like a little bit of movement forward and back or a little bit of pulsing with the hips up and down. And then shift that movement to the forward and back sliding, gliding motion. And then settle in for a moment, about five breaths here. Let the awareness be with the flow of breath. Notice how you might practice smoothing out the breath if it feels choppy. No need to judge if it does feel choppy, that's okay. One step for a few steps to get there. On the exhale, the back foot will come forward. We'll come to the forward fold. Another few times of bending and straightening the legs or finding that little bit of pulsing up and down in the hips. Press into the soles of the feet, send the hips towards the sky, let the head drop. Inhale, float back up to standing. Arms come up overhead, gaze, follow the palms. Exhale, draw the palms to the heart. Deep breaths to reset, just observing how you feel from a neutral standpoint. Okay, next we'll go ahead and move on to the back. Once again, um, I'll invite you to grab something from underneath the head if you want to and have whatever you need for Shavasana close by as well. We'll start first by drawing the right knee in towards the chest. The left leg will be long. As you hug that knee in, just really feel into the sensation of the thigh pressing against the abdomen. Begin to pay a bit more attention to the exhale. So you might even internally tell yourself we are moving towards rest. Body and mind, we are moving towards rest. And listening in, switching sides when it feels appropriate, staying here if you want to for a bit longer on this side.
And then either drawing both knees into the chest or finding something like happy baby or any other shape or movement that the body's craving before settling in for Shavasana. and settling into your rest whenever you're ready. Maybe even feeling into that conversation at the beginning of the full moon being on Sunday. So as the moon begins to wane, it's a period for letting go, it's daily practice that we do of Shavasana, kind of like a preparation for the final rest as well. As you settle in, we'll make our way through the body with some visualization. Begin to see a point of light between the eyebrows. And every time the light moves, it draws a little line like a connect the dot through the body. So we're gonna move first to the right shoulder to move to the part of the body, it's a little bit more permission for that spot to relax, release tension. Move down to the right elbow, point of light. Down the forearm to the right wrist in the center of the right palm. Back up the arm towards the shoulder. The base of the throat, point of light. Left shoulder, left elbow, down the forearm to the left wrist in the center of the left palm. Left wrist, left elbow, left shoulder, base of the throat, down to the heart space, down to the left chest and the right chest, to the navel and the belly and the internal organs relax a bit more. Center of the pelvis, point of light, the right hip, right thigh, right knee, right calf, right ankle, sole of the right foot, Right ankle, the right calf, right knee, right thigh, right hip, point of light in the center of the pelvis, left hip, left thigh, left knee, left calf, left ankle, sole of the left foot, left ankle, left calf, left knee, left thigh, left hip, center of the pelvis once again. And you see all these points lit up at the same time. And that light begins to pulse a little bit like the vibration of the sound at the beginning of the class. As you rest, you kind of feel into that underlying pulse vibration that the body always has humming. And you just let your awareness rest on that little vibration inside. Aware that there's nothing to do, nowhere to go. The immune system, the physiology of the body, the whole system is beautiful orchestration, life material. And you get to just exist.
the deep breath into the body. Senses noticing light coming in through the eyelids. The sensation of clothing against your skin. Temperature, the air in the room. Noticing any sounds that you hear in the room or internally. Thoughts, breath, physiology. There's a taste present in the mouth. You might begin to move the jaw from side to side. I'm aware of smell once again. Inviting any small movements back to the body as that feels appropriate. Fingers, toes, squeezing fists, flexing the feet. We'll eventually come up to a seat. For closing meditation, feel free to allow some time on one side before coming up. Just consciously transitioning between states of being. gathering anything you need from underneath your seat to allow yourself to be comfortable for the next 10 minutes or so. Begin by bringing the ring fingers together in front. Ring finger connected to the earth element, or prithvi. And bring the awareness to the pelvic floor. With the ring fingers touching, visualize a mountain at the pelvic floor at the base of the spine. Qualities of earth, of stability, foundation, structure, sustenance, abundance. Guiding the mind and the breath towards the base of the spine. Bringing the little fingers together to touch. Moving the awareness up the spine towards the sacrum. Elements of water, jaw, seeing oceans or a lake, waterfall, qualities of fluidity, creativity, sensuality, capacity to dissolve and transform, to wash away. Thumbs together to touch, let the awareness move up towards the navel. Element of fire, tapas. Capacity to heat, transform, digest, assimilate, absorb. Point your fingers come together to touch. The awareness moves up to the heart space. 
element of air, value, movement, dynamism, creativity. I see the wind, the movement of lightning, wind in a storm, the wind rustling leaves on the trees. Middle fingers come together to touch. Awareness moves up to the base of the throat. Element of ether, akash. Qualities of expansiveness, spaciousness, openness. Space between us and the room. Space between buildings. between towns, between countries, between continents, between planets, between galaxies, space inside the body. All the fingertips come together to touch again in Hakini Mudra, the integration, the awareness moves up to the space between the eyebrows. So if you are drawing the breath directly into the space between the eyebrows, letting the awareness be there. The awareness touches the crown of the head. And begin to see a light moving up towards the sky above you from the crown of the head. At the same time, a light is moving down the spine through the tailbone down into the earth. Same time, this connection of lowering the tailbone down towards the earth and feeling the crown of the head reaching towards the sky. As you breathe, just visualize a pillar of light straight up and down along the spine. Same pulsing, flowing energy, up and down, up and down, steady hum, steady hum. The ratio of the inhale and exhale become even. Noticing if the mind wandered away, offering it a gentle smile if it did. Come back to the breath and imagining that pillar of light. Shanti, 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 Hari Om. Continue the visualization. 
hand gesture. Be allowing the chin to drop towards the chest and enjoying the moment. Cultivate some gratitude and reverence for yourself, your inner being. Folks practicing with you and in our community and the world beyond. Happy you're ready, beginning to come back to the room, opening the eyes, noticing colors and shapes of the room. Let me crash the party today. Glad it was helpful, Margaret. I hope you have a good day and I hope to see you again relatively soon as I'm around. Be well.